Hey guys, welcome back to VR Man Cave. Andy here, and this is part 2 of my must have Steam VR games list, where we'll be exploring the best Steam VR titles, numbers 11 through 20, in no particular order. So let's go! In part 1 of this video, we looked at some really awesome PC VR games, but it was impossible for me to just list 10 games and stop there because so many more deserve to be mentioned, so join me on this journey to find the best PC VR games available right now. And if you've already watched both parts of this video and still feel I've missed anything, please let me and everyone else know in the comments. Now let's kick off with a classic title that was redesigned for VR in a way that brings new life into it and makes it worth playing whether you've synced hundreds of hours in the flat version of the game or have never even heard of it. Here we go. Skyrim VR I don't even know how many times this game has been re-released since its original 2011 launch date. But VR really brings it to life in a whole different way. And the fact that you can still apply mods to it and enjoy beautiful 4K textures while being closer to everything than ever before is just amazing. If you've never played Skyrim as a flat game, then you absolutely need to give it a go in VR, because simply having this much freedom is incredible. Whether you want to follow the storyline or forge your own way, or even just build a house in a chill spot and settle down with a wife and kids, then Skyrim has got you covered. Now I need to be 100% honest with you, even after 10 years since the initial release, the sheer size and complexity of this game causes it to still have some minor hiccups here and there, but I haven't found anything game-breaking. While the occasional non-VR elements can ruin the immersion a bit at times, such as the menus, subtitles and NPC dialogue options, the way everything else feels and simply experiencing this game in this never seen before way is a marvel of development. From the beautiful sights on the absolutely enormous map, to wielding weapons or casting spells while battling a dragon in VR is hard to describe in words. Boneworks. As amazing as Half-Life Alex is for the high level of interactivity the game offers, I've gotta give the crown for that and overall physics simulation to Boneworks. Because this game is just insane from those two perspectives. Cause you can literally pick up and manipulate anything you can see. And if you have the luxury of playing it on a Valve Index with full finger tracking, then that takes the immersion and fun levels to a glorious new high. The story itself is honestly nothing amazing, but the mechanics and overall quirkiness is just something that needs to be experienced. Because there's honestly nothing on this level on the market, at least as of now. It's one of the finest balances between a puzzle game and an FPS that I've ever tried. And besides the main campaign, the sandbox feature is just incredibly fun. And you've surely seen a ton of gameplay compilations of just doing stupid shit in this game, because it's weirdly addictive even if it has no actual purpose whatsoever. The game can only be played with smooth locomotion because in the physics based mechanic there's no place for teleportation. But having complete and utter freedom to tackle the levels in any way that crosses your mind is extremely liberating. Most of us have played lots of VR games and at one point asked ourselves, hmm, I wonder if I can do this, and have been disappointed to see that we couldn't. Well, in Boneworks that concept basically doesn't exist. Because the answer to that question will always be a resounding hell yes you can do that. So if you want a no limits game that will make you really understand the potential of VR, through humor, frustration and the pure childish joy of doing stuff that is completely socially unacceptable, then get your hands on Boneworks right now. Fallout 4 VR is it possible it's gonna give you motion sickness? Yes. Is it quite probable if you're a VR beginner? Also yes. Is it worth playing? Hell yes. Whether you're a fan of the Fallout series or have never played one of these games before, the sheer scale of the game in a VR medium is just insane. And regarding what I initially said about motion sickness, don't worry, there's also a teleportation mechanic for the movement if you prefer it. But honestly, smooth locomotion is the way to go in a game like this. The story is extremely well put together and the fact that your choices affect the ending gives it a lot of replayability value. Not that it actually needs it, since you could sink hundreds of hours in this game easily in just one playthrough. The combat system also feels really good in VR, with the large array of guns and the use of the VAT system. 
many flat games ported to VR have some issues in the user interface area. But in Fallout, thanks to your trusty Pip-Boy that now constantly sits on your wrist, navigating the inventory in VR is a breeze. I'm doing my best not to bring up any elements of the storyline in case you haven't played it. So I'll just leave it there to avoid letting anything slip. But if you're willing to get over some fiddling at first to get the settings just right for your hardware, then definitely try it. Blade and Sorcery Whether you've been in the VR space for a while or are completely new to it, you're bound to have seen some gameplay footage somewhere from this ridiculously fun and graphic violence filled title. Even though it came out back in 2018, the game is still in early access, but has received insane amounts of praise from the entire VR community, with over 14,000 very positive reviews on Steam alone, which is just crazy for a game that basically has zero storyline. So why do people like it so much? Well, simply put, because of the extremely well-designed physics properties and the pretty much infinite number of mods you can install. Do you want to fight Master Yoda himself with a lightsaber and force powers? Sure thing, there's a mod for that. Or maybe you want to wield Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet and fight a bunch of dudes using the power of the Infinity Stones. Yep, you can do that too. The developers are constantly pushing new updates and adding things and it's their goal to keep the game as open to modding as possible. So long story short, it's just really fun to play around with and come up with creative ways to defeat the waves of enemies coming to get you. I personally can't wait to see what this game will bring in the future, and if they ever introduce a storyline too, I think it's going to be one of the most fun titles available in VR. So show your support for the awesome job they've done and have fun going full psycho like pretty much no other game allows you to do, with a plethora of weapons, powers and props to satisfy your darkest thoughts. No Man's Sky VR If you love adventure games and having the complete freedom to wander around different galaxies and exploring alien life and terrains, then this is the game for you. It's designed as an immersive experience with procedurally generated planets, over 18 quintillion of them if you want me to be super accurate. And by the way, here's how that number looks like written down. Crazy, isn't it? Each one of them will be a different alien world with unique extraterrestrial life, from plants to animals and all kinds of beings. And what's even more crazy is that you can use your spaceship to fly from deep space to any of these planets smoothly, without any loading screens whatsoever. It has various activities, objectives and modes, so it's the type of game you can literally get lost in for as much time as you're willing to spend. It is up to you whether you want to fight on the ground or in space, gather resources, build awesome bases, rob the wealthy of their riches or take out pirates for their bounties. You are also able to upgrade your suits, weapons and spaceship and the possibilities are pretty much endless. The game had a rocky start when it first launched, but it has evolved into a marvel of development that is especially incredible in VR. So if you're into this type of game, No Man's Sky won't disappoint you. We're halfway through part 2 and I'd just like to kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this series so far. It's completely free to do so and you can always leave anytime you want if I start putting out bad content, but I won't. I've also been using Twitter a lot more lately and share the latest news and cool VR games and accessories launches over there, so consider giving me a follow at VRmancave. Alright, enough chit chat, now let's move on to the next title on this list. Population 1 You've probably at least heard the name of this game until now, as it's an insanely fun battle royale game where 6 teams of 3 people battle it out with a plethora of weapons to remain the last one standing and get that sweet sweet chicken dinner. The mechanics are just as fun as they look in the trailer and nailing a headshot with a sniper rifle from a rooftop, climbing any of the structures in the game, building to avoid your enemy's bullets and gain the height advantage, and flying by spreading your arms are very well implemented core mechanics of the game and really really satisfying to do. Even though the game is still fairly new to the market, the developers are constantly adding new weapons and enhancements and it's just an overall great experience that will keep getting better and better 
better as time goes on. And I can't wait to see what other surprises we'll get, because in the latest update they've introduced a katana, knives and much more to stimulate more close combat, and that should add a whole new level of engaging in combat, which is nice to see and it quickly became one of my favorite VR titles. So just do yourself a favor and get it as soon as you can, cause I'm pretty sure that you'll enjoy the hell out of it. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 I'll start with the obvious here, you need a pretty insane PC to run this properly in VR. But if you have it or are planning to build one, the experience is like no other. You can fly a large number of aircraft with completely realistic physics and controls and you can visit any place on the planet you want. It has real-time weather, time of day and flight patterns, so if you're flying over New York and see a plane next to yours, that plane is actually there at that exact moment in real life which is already such an awesome achievement from the developers, but where the game really shines, besides being a proper simulator, is in the graphics, hence the high hardware requirements. Everything is photorealistic, from the sky to the cars on the highways beneath you, and flying next to famous landmarks or even over your own house is a feeling that can't really be replicated by any other game out there. I personally don't have a full flight simulator setup and am not too well versed in these types of games in general, so I pretty much turned on all the assists and played using an Xbox controller, and I was still extremely impressed by everything I saw and felt from takeoff to landing. I'm not going to rant on any longer since I'm sure the flight sim fans among you are rolling their eyes at my new worthy way of describing it. But if you can run it on your PC, please do yourself a favor and try it because it's so well made and immersive that I honestly just forget I'm in a VR game and stare out the window with my mouth open 90% of the time. One quick tip for the ones of you who may own an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription, you have the PC version of the game included for free, so download it and enjoy. And honestly, even if you don't have the subscription or an Xbox, it might be worth signing up because it's definitely cheaper than buying the game, and you can cancel it after a month if you get bored or don't enjoy it. Pavlov. This is pretty much the grandfather of PC VR shooter games. Don't get me wrong, it's not that old since it came out in 2017, but 3 or 4 years in VR timeframes is quite a lot, so it definitely shows its age from a graphics standpoint, but it still has one of the largest player bases in its genre, and that's because it's pretty much Counter-Strike in VR. It's a fast-paced multiplayer title with a ton of mods available for it and everything from the classic deathmatch to a zombie mode. But one disclaimer I would actually make is that Pavlov is way better if you're buying it to mess around with friends, rather than go into public lobbies. You can pretty easily find random people to play with, but if you have a squad of friends it's just that much better. They've recently updated the game with World War II maps, guns and the ability to drive tanks, which is the first time vehicles are showing up in this game. This breathes new life into the gameplay and makes giving it a go even more worth it. Into the Radius VR If you've ever felt nostalgia for the Stalker series, then this will give you those vibes more than any other VR game out there. And to be honest, it's actually better in many ways. This surreal survival game is one of those titles which I honestly don't understand why it doesn't get more attention, because I found it extremely enjoyable and very well made. You'll get to explore the Pechorsk radius zone, and in your journey you'll come across all kinds of strange occurrences from weird creatures, to unexplained anomalies and lots of goodies to discover and loot. As you'll start diving deeper and deeper into VR in general, you'll realize that a game's greatest strong points can be its worst weakness at times. And that's pretty much the case with Into the Radius, because it's designed with an incredibly awesome physics-based mechanic which feels incredible, from opening boxes to reloading your weapon or climbing over brick walls, but because most of us don't have the luxury of owning a full body tracking VR setup, those interactions can also be a tiny bit janky at times. But to be honest, overall you tend to forget about those moments because you'll go through such epically immersive times that for me more than compensate for the times where you realize you're in a VR game because everything doesn't work quite as it should. I would totally recommend trying this one out because it can give you an extremely memorable journey overall. The Forest VR 
It's somewhat similar to the previous title, but also very different in certain ways. If you haven't tried it as a flat PC game before, this game is a survival thriller game that you'll be able to fully play in VR with mechanics rebuilt specifically for motion controllers, and everything works way better than I expected. The story is that you and your friends are the survivors of a plane crash and now you're stuck in a mysterious forest and you're trying to stay alive and survive against all kinds of freaky cannibals and mutants. You'll have to explore, gather resources, craft weapons, hunt and cook your own meals, find fresh water and build camps to have any chance to make it. But beware because at night you're at an even higher risk so strategically place traps and be on the lookout to protect yourself and your squad. It's designed to work as a cross-play multiplayer title, so you'll be able to play it together with your friends whether they have a VR headset or not. Alright, now that we've gone through what I think are the best Steam VR games, please let me know if you think I've missed anything that deserved to be on this list. So leave a comment down below and tell me just how ignorant I am to have missed including it in this list. If you're not too busy and still want to hang around on YouTube and watch some more stuff, you can either watch part 1 of this video by clicking here, if you haven't seen it already, or here's another suggestion right here. Thanks a mil for watching, I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one, stay well and enjoy VR. Cheers!